muchas gracias. Uh, it is wonderful to be here today with Domestic Workers United, uh, with Jews for Racial and Economic Justice, with a couple of synagogues, my own synagogue congregation, Kolot Chainu, and my Rabbi Ellen Lipman, the congregation Beth Elohim, with Old First Reformed Church, and with uh, many other friends. Um, it's really an honor to be here to work together to declare Park Slope a domestic justice zone uh, and to commit that we're going to do the work necessary to make that real. Uh, Park Slope is a neighborhood that cares about its kids and cares about justice. We want our homes, our streets, our parks, our neighborhood to be a place where we model fairness, where we model opportunity, where we bring people together across lines and where we believe in the idea of equal justice under law. And that's why so many organizations that are here today came together to support Domestic Workers United in the fight for the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights. When that bill was just uh, an idea that everybody said, oh, you'll never get there. We've been fighting for decades for the idea that domestic workers are workers and should have their labor rights respected. And people said, oh, yeah, sure, they're workers, but uh, you couldn't possibly win a new state law making real those rights, making them the law of New York State. But domestic workers kept fighting. Uh, domestic workers kept working with allies like Jay Fridge, like the synagogues and the congregations and people in Park Slope. And together, an incredible coalition was built uh, to take one of the biggest steps forward for workers' rights uh, in many of our lifetimes, making clear that domestic workers, people who take care of our kids, people who take care of homes, people who work every day in the most important places, have basic labor protections under the law. And that passage of the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights was an important, incredible accomplishment. And I want to say one more time, because I don't think we can say it enough, congratulations to the people who made it real. So, um, and yet, here we find ourselves, you know, two years later, saying, what's it going to take? to make that law reality and to make sure it's followed. And that when we saw that Park Slope Parents survey, I don't think ever, you know, just so folks understand, Park Slope Parents put out an anonymous, self-reported survey. So these are people who decided on, you know, to respond to a survey online or in print about their own practices as employers and who admitted, uh, either because they didn't know the law or weren't following the law, that they weren't paying overtime to their domestic workers despite the fact that it's the law, um, we knew there was more to do. And so I think uh, the idea that people would come together to say, we need to bring domestic workers and employers together so that we can do outreach, education, and enforcement to make sure this law is not just some piece of paper, but this law is the reality in the lives of domestic workers and domestic employers. And where better to start than right here in Park Slope, where we have a lot of domestic employers, uh, where therefore we have a lot of domestic workers, and where we have a lot of people who care about justice and fairness. Uh, and so uh, I, my hat's off to the idea of people who came up with the idea of a domestic justice zone, not one with special rules, because the rules of the law in the state of New York, but one with a special extra effort to make sure that uh, workers and employers come together to make sure everybody knows the law, everybody's aware of it, everybody has all the tools they need to follow it, and also that they know it's the law of the land. So uh, I wanna, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about the new hotline uh, for domestic workers to be able to check in with uh, the People's Production House and others are working on to know their rights. Very excited about the work to make sure uh, that employers also uh, know their responsibilities and know what they need to do to follow it. Um, so uh, to Priscilla and everyone at GWU, to Gail Kirshenbaum and everyone in this neighborhood at Juice for Racial and Economic Justice, uh, uh, to Marjorie and Danielle, uh, again, to the religious leaders that are here, uh, thank you very much for all the effort and energy that you have put into making domestic justice an important thing in our congregations, in our community, and for the commitment that you're expressing, that we're all expressing today, to continue working till we make that a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Now our next speaker is uh, Rabbi Ellen Lipman from Kalot Haneyu. <laughs> no, thank you, I'm sorry, I don't care. Thank you, and uh, muchas gracias a todos. Um, I am here this morning because I was once a house cleaner who was treated like part of the furniture. 
uh, because some members of my congregation do or have done domestic work, and many are employers. Some are sitting in this room. Uh, because Judaism has strong teaching about respect for workers' rights and needs, and because I believe very strongly that domestic workers make homes and families work in a way they just could not without them. And I am here because my congregation was um, part of the work towards the Domestic Bill of Rights in New York State, and I'm so proud of the people in my community who helped make that happen, and a uh, big applause to all of them. So I was uh, driving the other day and listening to the radio, and I heard this Stephen Sondheim song called Everybody Ought to Have a Maid from a show called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. And in part, the lyrics say, everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a menial, consistently congenial, and quieter than a mouse. Now, this is supposedly tongue in cheek, but in fact, far too many people who employ domestic workers think that they should be congenial and quiet and not express any real human needs, like for adequate pay, or overtime pay, or days off. New York State, as we know and as we heard now, has a legal domestic workers' bill of rights, and I've been really saddened to learn that it is being honored primarily in the breach. We have to change that. So when my congregation, Kolod Chayenu, which means Voices of Our Lives, was working hard with Jews for Racial and Economic Justice and Domestic Workers United to pass the New York State Bill, I noticed a little linguistic reality that I think has large implications. So I'm going to try to explain it in a way that's going to make sense. Um, one biblical Hebrew word for a maidservant is shifcha. The Hebrew word for family is mishpacha. If you look at the word mishpacha, the word for family, you will see within it the word shivcha, sort of forming the center of the word. Linguistically and in real life, you cannot hold a family together without the domestic worker at the center who makes it all work. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just show it to you. <laughs> In case it's of any interest, I can leave it with you guys so you can see it. Um, and uh, you know, if you don't read Hebrew, you may not be able to see it, but it's extraordinary um, that it's true. And, and uh, you don't see this Hebrew root very often. And so you see it here for us to remember. You cannot have a family work if they have workers who were working with them without those workers standing at the center, being paid well, getting time off, being recognized as real, full human beings. Thank you. Thank you.